this is H.C. Bailey, and welcome back to Let's Play Final Fantasy XIII! I love it when my transitions work like that, so you could watch the last episode and this one, and so it was like one continuous episode like that, with a transition like that, but anyway, today we've got to take on those Tonberries, but first things first, we got that big guy up there, and uh, I will fight him again in a mission later, so I'll just show it then, not now. Alright, got him. That guy's probably harder than the mission we've got to take out. I heard that, um, what is it, with Theochu, I don't know if it's this one or another one, but like in the Japanese version of the game, it was actually possible to get a preemptive strike on them, but then they made it so that even with a Deceptisaw, no, you can't get a preemptive strike on them anymore. But speaking of Deceptisaws, I actually do want to use one right now for taking on the three Tonberries. Basically, the secret to this battle, Triple Saboteur, use a Deceptisaw, and that's pretty much it. You might not need a Deceptisaw, but since there are three of them, well, you never know. So, first things first, let's get them all in near stagger. The nice thing about these guys, because they have such a high stagger point, I might be able to actually uh, kill all of them before their stagger will, ch or chain gauge will drain, because it'll take so long for it to work. Launch, damn it! There we go. It's like... She couldn't get him to launch because she was getting upset at him or something. Oh man, I wanted uh, deep protect on him. Well, never mind. Yeah, I can still get him. You see how slowly it's draining? For most enemies, if you, uh, uh, what is it? If you don't, like, get them staggered right away after getting a preemptive strike, the chain gauge will just completely drain by the time you get to the third one. But because I used saboteurs and quake at the beginning of the battle, it kept it from draining that quickly and easy enough. You can pick your jaw up off the floor after how easy I made that mission look. Nah, nah, just kidding. But uh, yeah, for defeating them we get the third and final Doctor's Code in the game. So you can max that out and dismantle it for, uh, what is it, for the, uh, uh, an elixir if you really want to. But now we get access to the final mission along this path, the Neochu. This is the only mission we can take from this path, by the way, since we're on the outer edge there. The only time you can get another mission from this node on the path is if you've completed all six of the final missions in the Fault Warrens, which obviously I haven't done that yet. So Now what I want to do is, for this mission only, I want to use a very specific setup so I can take out the Neochu without using instant death. So I'm going to take a moment to rearrange myself and be right back. Okay, we're all set and ready to go, putting Snow and Hope to a little bit of use in the post-game here. Uh, now, what I've done with my setup is I've upgraded a lot of my accessories that I was telling you about before, like the uh, getting the power gloves, the weirding glyphs. Uh, I also got a Gaian ring, which is the upgrade from the Siltstone ring. And like I said, I'll list that in the video description there. So what I'm going to do here is use one of each of the shrouds that I got there, and then we'll take on the Neochu. Yeah, we still kind of need those for the Neochu. I mean, I don't know if you absolutely need them, but it makes life a lot easier. Oh, hey. How's it going? You got moss growing on you, dude. When was the last time you took a shower? Well, I suppose he takes a shower all the time with the rain around, but... Well, you still got moss growing on your ass there. And it turned into an Iochu! For boss time! Okay, first things first, you want to get... Not hit by that. Okay, let's try that one again. If he hits your leader, just restart. You know, because that just really throws everything off for the battle. Uh, one out of three chance of that happening, and well, I got unlucky. So if that happens to me again, I'll edit it out. Take four! Let's try that one again. He keeps on going after Fang. I guess he just wants to give her a hug that badly. So, first things first. Yes, there we go. If you hit Hope, I wouldn't have cared either, but don't get hit by that. Get in peril on the guy. Then switch to, uh, uh, well, whatever paradigm I'm on. Sin Sen Med there. Get Provera and Phaedra on Hope there. Okay, so that's, you see that hit that he hit Snow with? That was hit number one. Basically, we want to count the number of hits he's hitting us with. He has that initial attack. Okay, that's two. So he had that initial attack, and then this is his second attack after that. So you want to count these up, up to four attacks. He has a very specific attack pattern here. Wait for the third one. 
Okay, that's number three. That attack is Earth Elemental, by the way, which is why I have Snow equipped with the um, with the Gaian Ring. That'll help reduce its damage there. Okay, wait for the fourth one. Wait for it. Okay, that's four. Once he uses that the fourth time after that initial attack, so it's a total of five attacks, then it's safe to go all out with Triple Ravager because he's pretty much just going to sit on his ass the whole time. So let's just keep on trying to build up that chain bonus there. Okay, he's using Screech. Switch to Triple Sentinel. Reduce the damage there. There we go. Switch to Com Send Med. Get a little bit of extra damage there, but really whatever you're doing here isn't going to matter all that much because he's going to use another attack soon enough. Uh, maybe not. Maybe he's just going to sit on his ass for a little while. Where's that next attack that you got coming for me? Okay, I guess he's... Oh, there it is. Okay, Pollen. What I want to do, wait for it, use Dispel Gun. That'll get rid of all the debuffs that he used on us. Switch to the initial paradigm and get Imperil on him. Wait for Hope to get, Im get paste on everyone. There we go. And switch to here, or switch to Sin Sen Med, heal up to Max, get Prevera and Faithra on Hope, and Fang there. I don't know if you need all of those. Then switch to Kam Sen Ram. Now, we're, we're getting him close to 50% of his max HP. When that happens, he uses Seed Dispersal. What that does is it summons a bunch of those Picochus. Ignore them. Just keep on going after the Neochu. Don't worry about them. If Hope's HP starts getting really low, okay, then I might switch to Tom Sen Med. But for right now, let's try to get as much damage in there as I can before I need to switch to Medic. Because Snow may not be able to uh, keep them all at bay. Okay, we're still good. We're still good. Okay, switch to Com Send Med now. Fang can do the rest. He keeps on summoning more and more and more of these Picochus. Ignore them. Just keep going all out. Keep going all out. Don't worry about them. Just keep going. You almost got him, Fang. Come on. Finish him. Yes. Okay. Once you got the Neochu, that's really the hard part of the battle. Then all you got to do is just stay alive. And take your time. Because the Neochu stats are so high, it is ridiculous. Okay. Switch to Com Send Rev. Eh, just for one round. Just to get a little bit of extra damage in there while we can. If Snow's HP gets a little too low, then I might switch back to Tom Sun Med earlier. Okay, that's good, that's good. Let's just keep, switch back and uh, keep Snow healed here. Yeah, just play this ultra conservative. Don't, don't even worry about how fast you're gonna be. You will get five stars on this on this mission. Don't worry. Well, I was going to switch, but uh, well, I guess I was a little bit too slow on that one. Okay, now we can switch. There we go. How did they hit Fang? You're not provoking them hard enough? We'll just keep on saying, Hey, I'm the hero! I'm the hero! Attack me! I'm the one you want! Maybe that's how Snow provokes these guys. I don't know. Maybe he keeps on... Uh, uh, well, I was going to try and make a Pokemon reference, but I lost my train of thought there because... I've never played any Pokemon games, so... Oh, wow. I'm trying to think of something with Team Rocket or something, but I'd imagine... Are Pokemon sentient? I don't think they are. At least not from what little I've seen of Pokemon. I don't know. i never watched the show, or the comics, or the games, or anything like that. Okay, so once you get down to two of these guys, then just uh, go all out with Comps and Rav there. Oh, that guy has a lot more HP than I thought he would have. I like how they got the music going on in the background for this particular boss battle. Nice touch. Yeah! Got him! Well, that's okay. I th you, you're okay, Fang. Yeah, you see that target time? No way you're not going to uh, five-star this. Even with quadruple power gloves and weird glyphs on everyone. I don't even know what that does. And... I don't really care. Okay, so once you complete one of the six end missions, depending on where, which path you took, then Titan teleports you away, and we get to do this all over again! Ha <laughs> ha! Seriously, we do. Uh, but this time we are going to take a very different path, so that way we can take on more missions. Someone was asking me, H.C. Bailey, 
does the path you take, as long as you t do the same mission, does the path you take influence like the reward you get or anything like that? And the answer is no. No, it doesn't matter what path you take. So if you go left, right, or right, left, and then you take on a mission from there, like at C2, it doesn't really matter. Yeah, for some reason I was reading somewhere that they were saying it mattered which path you take. Nah, they were lying. They were lying. They were talking out of their ass. So pay no attention to that. But now, whenever you do go through this place again, in order to teleport to the next place, you got to do the missions all over again. So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to go back to my previous setup, and then I'll take this guy out, and then we'll take the other path. So I'll just meet you after this mission then. Okay, we're all set and ready to go. I've uh, rearranged my setup back to the way I had it before. Something strange happened to me during that last mission. Well, first let's grab this new mission here, and we're going to take the right path to fight a new enemy there. Yeah, something strange happened to me during that mission when I was redoing it there. Uh, when I had the guy launched in the air because one of the other characters used Aurora on him, because he was hovering up and down in the wind, Fang totally whiffed at the guy four times. She totally missed him. It was like, what the hell happened? I could have gotten five stars without a Deceptisol. But for this battle, I do want a Deceptisol. For boss time! These guys are not to be taken lightly. Oh, you might think that they're easy, but, well, they are still, but first things first, let's use Quake. These guys are susceptible to Quake there. And maybe use a Libra while I'm at it, because they are kind of new. There we go. And then just go all out. You can take them out fairly quickly there. Easy enough. I might have been able to get a Preemptive Strike without using uh, Deceptisol, but, you know, I didn't want to take my chance there. Didn't want to uh, push my luck there. There we go. But yeah, there's just five of these guys. I'm making this look pretty easy, but if you don't get a preemptive strike on this battle, it can take a little while to kill these guys. I mean, they're not they're not entirely pushovers. So, I mean, heck, I made Tonberries look like pushovers with a preemptive strike. So, all right, there we go. Woo! For some reason, I feel like I barely got five stars in that battle. You know, I'm, I've just gotten so fast that if I don't get at least 16,000 on a score, I feel like I'm not going to get a uh, five-star rating for the battle, even though the minimum score is 13,000, usually, except for that one boss fight earlier in the game. But anyway, now, since I completed that mission, let's see, oh, no, that wasn't that one. Well, I forget which one I was doing. But uh, we're going to take the left path, so instead of going left all the time, we go right, then left all the time. So, that's how I roll this time around. But anyway, let's head on over here, then. Now, this time, we have to take on the Ochu. Yeah, this one's going to be a little harder, but I think we can take him. Yeah, no treasures or, or anything like that. Uh, for this guy, it's going to be a little similar to the Neo Chu, but eh, not quite. You'll, you'll see how it's a little different. Uh, he does have some new enemies with him that I've already fought, so I don't need to Libra them this time around. Uh, yeah, we want to stay on Comrade Rav. There we go. Ah, there he is, the mighty Ochu. You should have avoided him earlier, but this time, I think we can take him out. Man, that's quite a goiter you got there, pal. For boss time! Okay, so, first things first, let's take out these uh, Miro Ochus. They should be easy enough. There we go. Take this guy out. Yeah, when he starts pleading, that means kill him quickly. There we go. Ow. Okay, so first things first, we want to get Curse on the guy because he's very susceptible to it. There we go. Then once you've gotten that on him, I'd like to get slow on him, but if we get the, the big three debuffs on him first, so, okay, I got slow on him. All right, there we go. If you, if you get the big three debuffs on him before you can get slow in, because he does usually have a lot of resistance to it, then I would just say, you know what, screw it, don't worry about slow. Just get the big three debuffs and curse on him. And let's just keep going all out with that. Okay, switch to Comrade Rab, and just like we did when we were fighting the Neo Chu, just go all out, don't worry about the guy. Wow, I killed him enormously faster than I thought I would. I thought he might uh, get some other little guys to uh, help him out. 
But yeah, then the rest of these guys are relatively easy. I mean, we don't even need a Sentinel this time around. These guys just aren't nearly that strong. But yeah, like I was saying, uh, I heard in the Japanese version you could get a preemptive strike on these guys, or on the O2, but uh, not in the American version. No, no, we got stiffed on that one, I'm afraid. I heard it was really, 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 really good for uh, farming CP, but uh, yeah, we can't do that, I'm afraid. Come on. Okay, please tell me that's a five star rating. Yes! Alright, got the five star rating. But can I take on the mark from the next mission? Find out next time on Let's Play Final Fantasy 13! This is H.C. Bailey, signing off. Have a good day!